So the first thing you're going to notice from moving from Premiere to DaVinci Resolve is the way in which projects are saved. You thought I was going to waste time with an intro, didn't you? So in DaVinci Resolve, your project files are not stored as individual files like in Premiere. In DaVinci Resolve, you can still store your clips, your footage, everything anywhere on your computer, but the project file itself is actually stored in a DaVinci Resolve database. Now a database is just a collection of projects. That's what a database is. Your default database is stored under your users folder. However, you can create a database wherever you want. For example, on a hard drive. Let's do it real quick. I'll go on to my desktop over here. I will make a new folder and I will name it a uh, database. Perfect. So let's create a new database here. We'll go over, give it a name. Perfect. Uh, then we'll give a location of where we want to store our database. So I'll go to that folder that I just made on my desktop right there. Perfect. The names match up and click create. And there you go. That's your database. So if I were to go ahead and click this uh, folder, you'll see that now there is a folder for resolve projects. However, once you make that database folder, you don't really want to touch it anymore. You want to do all your naming project creation and organization through DaVinci Resolve itself. It's kind of like Minecraft. You created the world on the main menu. You know your world is saved somewhere on the computer. You don't, you don't really know where, but it's, I mean, it's somewhere on your computer. If you ever wanted to export a single project, you had to right click, click export project. Then you would import and copy that project back into another database where then you could work with it. I hate it. Okay then, let's create our first project. We will name it uh, Project, perfect. Okay, so you got your media page, that's for importing media. You got your cut page, it's like a simplified version of the edit page, and we're not really gonna touch that today. We've got the edit page, AKA Premiere Pro. Then you got the fusion page, AKA a buggier version of After Effects. We're not gonna touch it today. Then you got the color page. This thing is a beast. This is what DaVinci Resolve started as. It is so powerful. The coloring tools are amazing. The tracker, oh, beautiful. And it is some of the best tools in the industry. We're not gonna touch it today. Then you got the Fairlight tab, that's Adobe Audition. And the Deliver tab, it's kind of like Adobe Media Encoder, not really, it's kind of like, it's a middle ground, it's okay, it's decent enough. We're not gonna touch either of those today. So obviously you can click Control I to import media into DaVinci Resolve. However, uh, DaVinci Resolve will not take folders in this manner. So if I were to click on this folder here, if I wanted to import the folder and keep all the subfolders in it, it, will, it won't work, it just clicks open. If you wanted to keep all the subfolders, what you have to do is go over to the media storage tab here, navigate to your project files manually, which is right here. And then as you can see, I can drag in the folder just like that. And it makes a new folder that I can actually work with. So everything stays organized. DaVinci Resolve's interface is not customizable at the moment of recording. However, no one knowing how fast they develop, it will be one day. Premiere, you better watch out. But as of right now, what you'll find is all these little buttons here that open and close different menus. And you'll also find these little arrow things that expand them into full size panels. So let's start by dragging and dropping our first clip into the timeline. Good job. So we just drag and drop this from our media pool. Every button here is self-explanatory. Over here, you got the viewer. If you have a bigger screen, you'll have a little button where you can split it into two panels. That's not showing up for me right now. This button will disable any fusion and color effects that are applied to the timeline. If we click Control F, it'll go to full screen so we can view the whole thing. We'll press it again to disable it. And this little drop down here shows different tools you can use in the viewer. So if you wanted to display, for example, let's click on this clip we can display our transform so I can transform it around. Same goes for the crop tool. Now I can use these to go ahead and crop it. All of which are editable in the inspector. The inspector is the equivalent of the effects tab in Premiere Pro. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory, very similar to Premiere Pro, except for the keyframes. Those are a little, little, little bit different. If you wanna go look at a video, I made that in the description and you can go watch my old video. It's a little bit older, but it's still relevant on how to use keyframes. But regardless, we'll go over them a little bit later in this video. So this here, this is what video editors call the timeline. This button here will change how you view things. You can change the height, you can change all sorts of different things here, the audio viewing. But if you click this button here, this is how you're gonna show multiple timelines in case you want to do that. So right here, you can see it can have multiple tabs of different timelines, select which one to view. If I wanted to put them side by side, I would press this button right here and it'll create now another timeline stacked on top of each other. And I can select a new timeline here. But we're not doing that today. We're just doing one timeline. 
fine. So I'm going to close that out by pressing that button and even I'll close out the tabs so they don't even show up. All right, so I'm going to hold down alt on my keyboard and use my scroll wheel right here to zoom out and I'm going to hold down my middle mouse button again and I can use that to pan around on the timeline. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'll trim this down a little bit. So you have your selection mode that's bound to A. It's basic everyday editing. Then you have your trim edit mode. Now if you click on that, you'll see that it keeps everything together. So if I were to have two clips here and I were to start editing this, you'll see that it slides it along and it will ripple edit the second clip. That way there's no space left in between. If I were to click here, you'd see it slides the clip rather than moving it. If I were in the selection mode, I would move it. You have the dynamic trim mode. I don't really use it too much and there's a lot of complicated things and functionality to kind of memorize with it. So if you want to look into it, Google it. Then you have the blade edit mode. It's the exact same thing as the razor tool. It's just bound to be easy. All right, so let's amp this up. Let's drag in a second clip. Yay, yay me, we did two clips. Now I want to add a little fade in for our first clip. I could click the end edit point here and click control T to apply our default cross dissolve transition. However, instead, I'm going to grab this little white marker here. I'm going to drag that out and that just makes a little opacity animation. And as you can see, it fades in and that's super cool, super easy. Um, let's go ahead and revert our transform tools back to the original because right now they are cropped. Now this little slider is cool, but for the next fade, that won't really work because we want to do a cool transition. I don't know what that is, but we'll go over to our effects tab and click on our video transitions here. And then we'll find the stupidest transition that we can find, which will be this spiral. What? Whoa. Sp spirals. Uh, and we will drag it onto our clips. But wait, DaVinci won't let us drag them onto the clip. Stupid Da Vinci. Now a transition is an overlap between two clips and they have to transition and overlap together. However, if I were to drag them out, you'd see that I can't drag either of these out any further. Therefore, there's nothing to overlap. So if I were to trim each of these down and bring them back down together, you'll see that they now do have overlapping frames to work with. So our transition will work just fine. Gorgeous. All right, now let's add in some music. Good job. Also just found out that my camera hasn't been recording for the past 20 minutes. So now that we have music, I wanna to go to the beginning and add a little fade. I could drag out the white handle here just like I did before. However, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you something new, yay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to undo that and I'm going to uh, use this little volume slider here and I'm going to hold down alt and click to make keyframes. Whoa, look at that. Ma magical. Um, so I can drag these down now and create a little animated volume controller. It's so cool. Also, DaVinci updates the audio waveforms live. Look at that. It's so cool. Premiere, you suck. Then I'm going to go over here to our end point here and I want to make this edit point here align to this bass drop that was loud in my ears. Wow. Um, so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to grab and drag this over just like that. Isn't that cool? In DaVinci, you don't need an extra tool to just slide that edit point around. All you have to do is click in between the two edit points right on the center of the edit point and you can just slide it around. If you were to just grab the side of the edit point, you could trim this clip and if you you could trim this clip too. But if you click the middle area, then you can just slide the edit point around. Now, let's add a spaceman. Um, oh, astronaut, that's what they're called. We're gonna go to our media pool. We're gonna click on our little spaceman here. And in DaVinci Resolve, your old belligerent keys are the exact same as in Premiere. Now, if you don't know what your old belligerent is, then I'm gonna educate you, son. Actually, I'm not going to educate you. I'm just going to put up a diagram on, on the screen. Um, here it is. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click I to create an in point and O to create an out point. If I wanted to get rid of either of those, I could click Alt O to get rid of my out point. And same with uh, I, but we're just going to make our in and out point right there. Perfect. Now, if I were in Premiere, I would press comma to insert and period to overwrite. 
However, in DaVinci, it's going to be F9 to insert and F10 to overwrite. Now, the best thing to do here would be pressing F10 to overwrite. However, I'm going to press F9 and create a problematic situation for the sake of this tutorial. Oh no, a problematic situation has occurred. I did not expect that to happen. Well, it just split my audio track into two, and I don't want that to happen. I'm just, it's my music track. I don't want it to be affected by my other edits. Now, how do I prevent this from happening? I could, of course, just lock this track. However, then it's locked. I can't edit it and work with it, and I don't want to have to unlock it every time I have to move something, because I'm still doing that a lot. So instead, in DaVinci, there's this super cool thing called auto track selector. So if I were to disable it for this track, this track is, it's not locked. Okay, I can still grab it, I can still move it around, I can do whatever I want. However, it's not affected by any global edits that we do. Let's do this for example, if I were to put this cursor over the top of these two clips here, if I press control B with nothing selected, by default, DaVinci will cut every single track underneath the cursor, except for our audio track because it does not have the auto track selector enabled. However, if I were to select this track and click control B, you can see it still does cut. It's just not affected by global edits. It is a super useful tool. I promise you'll use it a ton. I didn't know it existed till 10 minutes ago. Anyways, let's cut to the track portion of this. Beautiful. And let's make a cut with control B and we will drag it over. Wow, that zoomed out. Um, and let's drag it to our edit point here and we'll just drag this here and that there and now if we play this you'll have a seamless cut Okay, okay, this clip is cool, but it's very still we need we need we need to spice it up Okay, I'm sure you've noticed these dynamic tools here that I accidentally turned on now I'm gonna show you that we're gonna use them but we're gonna make an animated zoom for a clip. That's right, you don't have to animate the transform controls to make a zoom. You suck, Premiere. To get these tools showing, you go down to this transform. Tra so to get these tools showing, you go down to the drop down, just like I showed you before, and click on dynamic zoom. And if we go over to our inspector and our video tab here, you just make sure dynamic zoom is turned on. So if I press play, as you can see, it's starting to zoom and we can adjust it however we want. My dog is barking in the background. I'm recording. Well up. Okay, so I can move these tools however I want. So this is the start point and the red is the end point. So if I were to press play, bam, look at that zoom. Look at that animation, it's glorious. I can also click the swap button under our inspector to swap these two. And now it zooms in instead. Very cool. To spice things up once and for all, let's go over to our effects tab. Go to our open effects. There's this effects folder here. These are kind of like fusion presets. They're a little different from the open effects, which we're going to use here. Um, we're going to use, uh, honestly, a random one because I feel like it. Uh, we'll go with uh, whatever. Light rays. That looks cool. Let's drag those in. And look at that. Now we've got awesome dog with light rays. And we can go into the effects tab over here. And at this point, I'm just showing you guys where things are. You can figure out all the settings. You can mess with things. You can toggle things on and off and turn up your source threshold and stuff. I believe, I, I believe in you guys. Once you have this perfect edit done, let's, let's signify our work by making a title. So let's go over to our effects once again, click on titles. So we'll click on our titles and we'll drag in a text right here. Not text plus, text plus is for fusion and adding some more graphics and stuff. You can look into it later, but we'll drag in our text here. And what I wanna do is let's turn off this, this dynamic zoom tool here and let's give it a super creative title that really expresses the edit that we have created here today. Perfect. Our, our edit is looking super great. Now we have a creative title. However, you know what? I think this title needs to spin um, because keyframes. So let's take this. Let's go to the beginning of our clip. Let's click this button because this is keyframeable. With that selected, let's go towards the end of our clip and let's make another keyframe. But this time, let's rotate it. Whoa, magic. Okay, now we press play. 
Whoa, magic, it rotates, yay, super cool. Um, however, how do you affect these, how do you move around these keyframes? It's not actually in the inspector tab, it's kind of where it is in Premiere. Your keyframes are actually edited in the timeline. So if I were to expand this out and I press this little button here, it will show keyframes. And those are two keyframes right here. I can drag them around, move them. I can click this little arrow drop down to get uh, more details about what each keyframe is. Um, so if I were to make another keyframe, uh, maybe for the, the position, we can make it there and make another one here and just keyframe it. I need, forgot to keyframe it. And now you can see that there's two and I have these for the position and this row for the rotation. And now I can press that and beautiful. We have made something. Like I said, if you want to learn more about keyframes, I will leave a link in the description of my older video where we went over keyframes specifically. With that, I think our masterpiece is looking pretty good. Let's click Control S to save because I haven't saved any of this and I forgot about it. Um, DaVinci Resolve actually has a live save feature where it will save things on the fly. It's in the preferences. Google it. You'll like it. Now, obviously, we didn't go over the other tabs like the Fusion Color and Fairlight tabs today. However, because this is a Premiere tutorial, I want to make a quick reference here. Uh, Fusion, I would consider slightly different than the other tabs. While the other tabs are more so just different ways of viewing the, the same timeline that you are in, I would consider Fusion more of an actual separate program rather than something that's fully integrated into DaVinci Resolve. Like for example, if I were to take one of these clips into Fusion, um, what it would do, it would make a Fusion composition into our timeline. It's almost like making a dynamic link with After Effects. And if I were to try to drag that link out, it wouldn't extend out unless I have made more frames in the Fusion tab. So that's just something to think about. It's a little bit more of like a destructive work workflow, you can kind of say. Um, I just want you to kind of keep that in mind that from the edit page, the Fusion tab is kind of like an After Effects dynamic link. As for how everything is compiled, you have your edit page and then fusion effects are applied on top of that and then color grading is applied on top of that. So that's just how everything is piled in terms of effect. But with all that said, let's export our beautiful masterpiece. We'll go over to the deliver page. Up here you'll see that there are a ton of presets and stuff. They cause me problems. I do not touch them. I do not like them. We don't need them. Now we'll go to our custom page here. We'll give it a file name. Um, and then we'll go over to our location here and we will save it on the 3D objects. Um, we'll come over here, set our export format to MP4, which will be right here, and click Add to Render. Why won't you let me add to Render Queue? And then we'll click Add to Render Queue, and it adds it to our queue. So you can make a queue of different editing jobs with different formats and different you know resolutions, and then click Render All, and it will render all of them. So. With that, our project is complete. All right, thanks guys for watching the tutorial. This is a super awesome tutorial. I put a lot of effort into this tutorial. Okay, please, please, please share it. Okay, I'm kind of trying out YouTube again for about a, a year here. We're gonna try to see where it goes. Uh, so if it doesn't really work out, I'll probably stop doing this stuff. But if you want, if you want to support, if you want to give me money, okay, Patreon, you could could support the channel. We'll start we'll start building it. We'll keep doing it. You can buy a sex shirt. But anyways, thank you. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much guys. Have a great day and good luck editing.